I want to segue to EGFR uh, inhibitors. Can I just add one more comment uh, yes, on the ALK story? Um, I think you know the, the key thing we also need to keep in mind is as we have a patient walk in the door and we know their ALK, um, our goal is, of course, how do we get them from this point to as far into the future as possible, feeling well, living their life. And you know that doesn't always mean start with the drug with the 90% response rate. If you then have nothing to follow it with, mm -hmm. it might be better you know, to start with the crizotinib, move on to the well, LDK to disseminate, and then what do we do after that? And what we don't know is can we sequence these drugs and get <laughs> from diagnosis to three, four, five, ten years into the future. And, and I'm not, you know, I think we're just, this is all speculation. These studies haven't been done. It's not going to be clear if they ever will be done in that way. But obviously, from the patient perspective, that's what we want to be thinking about. There have been some issues in that regard. The Ariad compound initially allowed exposure to both uh, crisotinib mm -hmm. and to uh, seritinib, and there were some heightened toxicities and. Uh, Consequently, they became gun shy and excluded prior exposure. To I just want to make one, one quick, comment. yeah, one quick comment. <laughs> and, and we're talking a lot about these new therapies, but keep in mind that outside of the clinical trial and outside of the development or approval of these therapies, these patients with driver mutations, including EGFR now, out, do do fairly well with chemotherapy, and that mm -hmm. is an option for our patients who are Certainly not available. Certainly, they progress, but I think when they progress, when they progress uh, and I, I think there's data with pimetrexid uh, with the uh, ALK mutation. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to marginalize that outside of the clinical yeah. trial. Mm -hmm. uh, chemotherapy remains an option upon mm -hmm. progression of the initial targeted agent. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's, it, well, it, it, it is interesting to, to me that Corey pointed out we have a wealth of data in the EGFR mutants that TKIs are better than chemotherapy first line. We have no data. Mm -hmm. No head-to-head -head data, data. Yeah. not right. yet, line. Yet, uh, but I think many of, us, many of us have used the targeted agent in the targeted uh, population. It's conditional approval allowed uh, any line of therapy. Right. And right. certainly if we pre-identified somebody as out positive given the uh, response rates, right. uh, it seemed pointless to start with chemotherapy. I wouldn't say pointless. I mean, there, mm. we can, I wouldn't we can debate. I, I agree with yeah. Heather. Point. I wouldn't dismiss chemo as having a role. Speaking of EGFR okay, inhibitors, moving on uh, to EGFR, uh, I think, the, oh. yeah, again, that's still a uh, much higher percentage than mm -hmm. the ALK positive, 10 to 15 percent of our uh, population. If uh, you're of East Asian ethnicity, a female, never smoker with adenocarcinoma, it's about 65 percent. Uh, based on uh, data from the IPASS trial. But as Ben has pointed out, inevitably these patients mm -hmm. develop disease progression. So uh, there's been some very interesting, some very early work on uh, agents that are specifically designed to address that issue. And if, Heather, you can start with that. Right, and this has been a really exciting year mm -hmm. for that. I've spent uh, many years uh, in working with multiple trials of compounds that were supposed to work um, after uh, erlotinib resistance developed, many of which worked very well in the laboratory setting but failed to work in people. Um, we did have exciting data with the afatinib and cetuximab combination with phase one presentations a couple of years ago, and that is um, a combination where we are seeing response rates somewhere in the you know, over 50% range, but um, the confirmatory trials of that haven't been done. Um, and now this year, we finally have a couple of compounds where we have, albeit small numbers in phase one, but where we're seeing response rates for patients who have developed resistance, <coughs> um, primarily in honor lotinib. There were a few patients who had had uh, gefitinib previously. Um, and so we heard a little bit about uh, this at ASCO with the CO1686 compound. Um, and then compound. The Clovis compound. Um, and then at the uh, European meeting um, this fall, and then again at World Lung, we had updates from both of them. And so at, at this point, as things stand, and of course these are ongoing phase one dose escalation trials still, so we're still very, very early. Um, but with the AZD9291, the latest waterfall plot is quite impressive. Um, and they even, when they looked at the T790M, which is of course the predominant resistance mechanism in patients who have EGFR mutations, um, uh, and that was sort of the, the, the challenge. We could never get anything to work against T790M. They had a 9 out of 8 or 50% response rate for those T790M. 9 out of 18. 9 mm -hmm. of 18, sorry. Mm -hmm. That was the wrong number. Yeah, 9 <laughs> out of 18. That's how we get to 50%. So the 9 out of 18 um, response rate, which is, is quite impressive. And even many We're of We're starting to get into uh, right. Novartis, uh, sort of mm -hmm. ALK numbers for second right. generation. And uh, to, to Mark's earlier point, that's just the resist. I mean, the, the majority of those patients were on the, uh, the downside of the waterfall plot where they were getting some clinical benefit. 
um, with the, uh, the Clovis compound, um, there was a, a longer dose escalation period, um, but for patients on the active dose, they had six out of nine responses in the T790M patients. So again, these are phase one dose escalation. Very There's a lot early, more but work, very but promising. very, very promising. And really, this year, or 2013, was the first year where we saw single agents that could work against T790M. So I'm, I'm quite excited about that for our patients. Mark, if you could comment on this, the toxicity seemed to be different as well. Well, th these drugs were designed to kill cells that are now dependent on T790M. Mm -hmm. uh, they also are extremely effective against you know, single mutant, single EGFR mutants. What they don't do is effectively inhibit wild type. Mm -hmm. So the usual side effects we see of rash and diarrhea are really pretty rare. Yeah. Um, they are targeted drugs, though. They're going to work really well up front with one mutant, and they're going to work with T790M, but they probably wouldn't be the obvious ones to work if you had another mechanism of resistance. And as you know, we only find T790M in about 60% of the patients. Um, I think these drugs, though, are, are, are going to be game changers. Mm -hmm. I mean, you up or see them being used up front. Uh, up f at the very and the worst, up front, mut single mutation positive in EGFR. They have very little diarrhea or rash. Certainly less toxicity. Yeah. Um, then, and at least theoretically, they could delay the time to the emergence of a second site mutation. So they might or, hit, uh, or, score on all points. So yeah, but again, could be some other. Very early. In, in the other. And then in the uh, second line setting, you know, they'll be very effective for T790M. I, it, it's hard to believe they're going to be more effective for, uh, say, with somebody with med amplification or HER2 amplification, some other mechanism. So what are our recourses for med amplification? Initially, the initial reports were yeah. 20 percent. It seems to be a declining you know, it, percent. Yeah, I think uh, even uh, our, our good buddy Dr. Engelman would say it's well under 5 percent, which is <laughs> what people have seen. Well, if people have gone for the obvious. They've tried to give med inhibitors, mm -hmm. but those drugs are, are pretty tough to give with an EGFR TKI. Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't have a good strategy for them yet. Um, getting back to what Dr. Uh, Levy pointed out, when in doubt, you give chemo. chemotherapy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just remember that if you don't know, you're not sure, you can't get the result back in time, you give mm -hmm. chemo. I, that would still be considered the standard approach in those mm -hmm. with acquired resistance. And, and uh, I would like, I would like the, to uh, think uh, that, but you know, I, the people that come to me, I still see a lot of people treated based on a profile uh, and not on molecular results. And, and, you know, if you go to the ASCO five things we shouldn't be doing as oncologists, it's number five. You only give a targeted drug to people that have the target. 